It's Random Rambling Wednesday. It is? It is. Yeah, man, I don't know what to talk about today. You know what to talk about? I don't either. We'll figure it out as we go. My name is Justin. And I go by JP. And uh, we are the Podcasting Dead. Normally from the name, as you can tell, we obviously talk about The Walking Dead, but we talk about other stuff, too. We promise we do. And uh, today we, is the day where we just get on here and talk about any and everything. It can go from religion to sex to, I don't really want to say politics. Religious we don't really do politics. Sex. Religious sex, is that a thing? Yeah, it is. You've never had sex with a nun? I haven't. Tell me about it. Well, I haven't had sex with a real nun, but I do have like nun outfits. I'll, I'll put them on. I'll have the bonnet. Or wait, wait, wait. Call. You're the one who wears the nun outfit? Huh? <laughs> Oh, man, make sure to hit that subscribe and like button, because what does it hurt? It don't cost you anything. helps us out a lot. And stay tuned after the podcast for social media information. Right now, let's get it going. Some more on this nun thing. Tell me about it. You dress up in a nun costume when you get freaky? I, I mean, I don't think that. You, you know, growing up, I don't I don't know what, like, uh, you eroticized when you were growing up. Cause when we, just sex. Well, when we were just sex up, in general, all when all I was young, is, it was I just wanted sex. It didn't matter. I didn't really have eroticism. Well, no, I'm talking about like maybe you were one of those uh, lucky boys having sex at like 12 and 13 years old. I was. not Well, no, I was not having sex at 12 or 13. But you know, we didn't come up in the age of Pornhub and you porn. No, that stuff. we had to download it from like LimeWire and websites and give our computers viruses. I didn't even have that, man. Like, I mean, we we had internet and the computer at the house, but it wasn't capable of downloading pornography. So, I mean, early on, I'm talking like even younger than that. Like, what would you start janking about like 10, 11, something like that? I really that wasn't there? planning to podcast today and talk about when I started masturbating. Well, brother, you brought it up. No, you brought it up with your nurse thing. Well, I, th- I think it's a. a I just was curious as to if you really wear a nurse costume. I mean, not a nurse. I'm sorry, well, a nun I'm, costume while you're getting freaky. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. But I mean, look. Oh, did I say content warning too? This is the one podcast we don't uh, filter our, ourselves. More or less, we don't filter JP. I don't usually get too bad, but uh, the subject can go anywhere, as you can see. So. Most of our podcasts are, are fairly family friendly. They're not intended to be family family friendly, but we try to keep them somewhat clean. But this is the one that we do not hold back. Um, Why are you ashamed of pleasing yourself? I'm not ashamed of pleasing myself. I'm ashamed of talking about it publicly. Oh, what, what's wrong with that? I think we should be able to talk about it just as fluently as we do anything else. We can talk about your habits if you would like. Well, all I'm saying is, you know, when I was coming up, I didn't. Yes, when you were coming up. Yeah, when I was I was coming up a lot. Believe me, like three times a day on Jesus, occasion. Jesus, but uh, no, nah, man, like you know, I didn't really have access to a material like that, especially early, early on. We might have had a uh, like HBO at some points, and I might have uh, you know caught something late at night. But generally, man, it was just you know the girls. Man, late night Skinamax. Remember that, like softcore yeah, oh, porn. Oh, yeah. That would do it for you when you were a kid. <laughs> but like, it, it would depend on the cable package we had at the time or whatever whatever but you know for me like i'm sure a lot of fellas it was just whatever gal was on the tv whether it was like donna from that 70s show you weren't into the sears catalog i'm not saying i never was man those are wwf magazines back in the day i definitely got some use out of those we're all right tell me this yeah and uh all right so do you remember the first porno that you ever saw? I do, actually. It was called, I don't know if it was Major or Sergeant, but it was something Rock. He was, a, he was an officer, he was, he was a military man, last name Rock, either Major or Sergeant. Uh, his chopper went down in the jungles, and uh, he had some beautiful women with him. I guess it was a ragtag team of mercenaries, and they're uh, dispersed in the jungle, <laughs> And, you know, it's, when you're in the jungle, I guess there's a lot of aphrodisiac kind of uh, things you're breathing in. Are there? Know. I've never been to the jungle. I don't know. But apparently you get really horny when you're in the jungle. <laughs> and uh, we, we bought it. or We didn't buy it. We rented it on VHS, me and my cousin and this other guy who uh, actually went on to be an MLB baseball player, I think, out in uh, California, like the, was it the Devil Rays or something out there? That's the, no, you're talking about the Tampa Bay Devil Rays? No, that's a Florida team. I don't know. He was he actually made it to Major League Baseball. I don't know how uh, big his career was. Anyway, I mean, there could be like a, a, a minor league team out there, the Devil Rays. The he, Tampa Bay Rays are kind of what 
you know, that's yeah, it's I, funny, I man. Know. I like I found his Facebook page a while back, and he actually like coaches a, a local high school baseball team, married to a super hot girl I went to high school with, and he went, he's watched a porno. Yeah, yeah, he went to a, a different high school, but him and my cousin played baseball, and it was a sleepover. They were uh, sitting up top in my cousin's bed. I was down in the floor in a sleeping bag. They were, they were like maybe two years older than me. I always thought it was weird, man. Back in the day, I mean, it was a pretty common occurrence for guys to want to get together and watch porn because, like I said, you didn't have it on a tablet you can enjoy in the privacy of your bathroom or whatever. Like, guys got together and were like, hey, man, I got this tape, you know, come over, let's watch it and, and chub up together. I was never into that. Like, they they said that? Like, I, I've, well, no, it might not have been let's said. Let's chub up together? Yeah, it, it pro- that, that probably wasn't the uh, nomenclature at the time, but... I was all, you know, I mean, it's it's well known on the podcast. I'm I'm a degenerate, but back in the day, man, I was horn not, dog. I, I don't know about degenerate horn dog. Yeah, definitely. yeah, but man, I I wasn't into that like like group watching pornog. I wasn't even into pornog that much. I mean, I remember the what first, is pornog? Pornography is that like your street slang for pornography? I, I think I got that from like workaholics or something. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it's not a JP, uh, you know, term original I came up with no, nah, but. But no, nah, man, I remember like the first porno. I can't remember what it was, but the first time I saw a clitoris on a porno, and I was just like, man, that's a, a weird kind of gross thing, man. And I, it was like California something. I uh, ended uh, aunt ended up finding it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, cousin. He he got like a uh, something to do with hip hop. I don't know. It's weird. And uh, you know, just kind of flew under the radar. She probably knew, but. Just hmm. let it slide. She didn't have a problem with, you know, the, uh, you know, she was like, as long as it's nothing uh, too crazy. I guess that was her reasoning. I don't know. We never had a porn uh, conversation. I, I could, maybe I could hear her to call into the podcast and we could discuss it. Sure. We would love to hear her call in and talk about her but finding nah, man, your porn. Sergeant Rock, unless it was Major Rock, and the three of us watched it. And it was. You and then actually, you each had to go pee for about five minutes. Nah, man, I did. I. I, I was too like just shy and nervous to even like get a boner. I think I don't know about the two of them. They might have been jacking each other off up there in the twin bed. But well, you know, there used to be porno like drive-ins. Yeah, people man, would drive like, in to, to to you know watch porn together. Dude, I, this is crazy that this came up. You know, no pun intended, but pun totally intended. I, I was listening to NPR yesterday, driving around, and Howard Stern. I you know he's getting ready to retire. He just put out another uh, memoir. And he's talking to this woman about, you know, his, you know, how his uh, on air persona has evolved over the years. And they talk about the influence of porno on culture and on the youth. And he was like, in my day, it was actually like the only porn I had access to was like a, what do you call it, like an eight millimeter, like reel by reel. You Jeez. Know? He said his dad had a projector in the basement. He had to wait for, you know, whatever circumstance to come across to where his mom, dad, and sister would leave the house. He'd have to sneak into the basement. Hook up this projector, get the reel set up, put it broad, you know, project it on the basement wall, and he would just have to like, you know, just kind of memorize whatever was on that uh, picture so he could, you know, watch it, put it up quick enough, and you know, have it have it stored up in his, his spank bank. I mean, that's Which, a lot of work. I know, man. To 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 watch porn. And he said back then it was, you know, I mean, porno was so ridiculous. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably before this, this isn't even like seventies porn. This is like sixties porn, you know. Jesus. So I mean, we uh, we don't know how. Even though you and I didn't have like the porn hub and stuff, we don't know how good we had it uh-uh. in a lot of ways. I mean, think about before that. Wait, man. We we didn't know how good we had it. Or you mean we don't know how good we have we, we we take for granted how good we have it now. Well, yeah, now for sure, even more so. But I mean, even as kids, man, I mean, back then, back in like the '60s, they, you didn't even see cleavage on TV, you know? Yeah, I don't know if you saw freaking ankles. I don't know, man. But yeah, I, Donna from that '70s show. There was quite a uh, quite a few, but yeah, it, uh, it just you know it makes you wonder what uh, where all this is going. With the with the just steady stream of pornography, I mean, think about if you had access to all that back when you were a kid, would you have even had to like figure sex out like in the way that you had to when it came time to actually get naked with a girl? Well, the one thing I learned is that real life sex, at least when you're young, you know, you have all these expectations from things right. you've seen in porn, is nothing like pornography. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, you, 
I mean, it might develop that way as you grow up and you start finding your kinks and things you like. But you know, at that at that age, when when it first happens, or even when even when you first start doing it, right? You know, for that first little while, it's you're just happy to be doing it. Yeah, but I mean, man, there's like actual like instructional porno out there now. I mean, stuff that tells you shows you the basics of like cunnilingus of stuff like that. So, All right, I mean, back up. What is cunnilingus? Uh, eating, eating it out. Cunnilingus. Eat, that's a term monkey. for yeah, eating the monkey. Hmm. Tongue in the kitty. Now that makes that that analogy I would have picked up. But not cunnilingus. But... I mean, that's actually like a clinical term, like a it's like fellatio, you know, or for coitus. Yeah, cool. Yeah, there you go. So interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. So yeah, well, say it I again. Said, I mean, there's like cunnilingus. Hey, yeah, baby. Yeah, you've I'm never seen to... that uh, SNL sketch from like early 2000s. It's got a uh, it Jimmy Fallon, like... and it's got um, Frick, man. Why can't I think of his name? Uh, oh, you know, freaking uh, Walken, uh, Christopher Walken. Right. He's a he's a Civil War general, and he comes up to this old plantation, and his name is Colonel Angus. And it, it's really funny, man. I'm not going to. It almost sounded it like you were saying out. cuddle Angus. Like yeah. you love your Angus beef so much you cuddle it. I mean, man, that's another freaky thing I'm into. But we won't get into that today. I mean, I would like to. I mean, we can get into some beef, brother. <laughs> I got some cold cuts at the house and they feel really good. No, 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 no. I didn't mean I want to oh. get into it that way. I oh, just oh, meant oh. I wanted, to, I wanted okay. to learn more. Um, <laughs> ugh, but well. no, man. I mean,. Uh, Pornography. We're both like First Amendment guys. We don't really believe in restricting uh, media or expression. So no censorship. Yeah. Right. So I mean, you think it's a positive impact on society, negative impact on society? I think it's both. A little bit of both. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's pros to porn, but yeah. there's also cons. I mean, like I said, pr- uh, porn can set. Now, don't you have some Republicans trying to like propose like porn taxes and stuff on like? Yeah, man. That's, that's ridiculous. Actually, that's actually a way they're trying to impose uh, internet censorship in Britain. Like, they're, I'm not even yeah. getting political here. I mean, forget conservative Democrat for a minute, but why? Like, what's the... I mean, I know it's a, it's a way to make money for the government because, oh, man, the government needs more of our tax dollars for sure. But, um, you know, what's, the, what's their reasoning behind it? Man, they're just trying to uh, be able to govern the internet. And it doesn't stop at social media. Like, what a, what kind of... You know, media people get on there, conservatives, liberals, they're, they're just trying to get to where they can censor and govern the Internet. Right now, the, the Internet's still kind of like the Wild West, and they just really want to govern it. Of course totally, they do, yeah. because they want— you know, and, mm, and porno is mm. the perfect way to do that, just like the FCC did with, you know, with Stern back in the day and with the network television, all that stuff. Just pornography gives them a window to start governing the Internet and dictate what we can and can't see, who we can and can't talk to— what kind of voices get on there? And You're exactly it, I mean, right. It is, it is kind of weird that Republicans spearhead that because uh, more and more conservatives are the one getting the ones getting censored off social media. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's like, haha! You censor us on Twitter. We're going to take away your porn. Yeah, but it, it's just strange that you know the the over governance of the internet is it, conservatives have fewer and fewer platforms. And they kind of, you know, led to their own demise just with all this uh, censorship over the years. And like I said, it's just kind of like a Trojan horse. They do it with seemingly good, wholesome intentions, but at the end of the day, they're they're just, you know. Yeah, I think sometimes porn can set unrealistic expectations. Well, yeah, going going back to just porn in and of itself. I mean, it, it's like anything else, man. You know, you got a moderation. It, it can absolutely right. be an addiction. It's just a fantasy world you can go escape to whenever you want. Yep. Oh, so moving from porn, how's life treating you? How are you and the girlfriend? I know that uh, you guys are maybe talking about taking some big steps. I'm just living life, brother. I'm, you know, I take steps every day. I feel hungover as hell this morning, and I didn't drink anything last night. I stayed up a little late watching Umbrella Academy, but is it a is it some allergy stuff? I know, like I mean, it could be, it could yeah, be sinus related. I feel good, man. I slept great, but I, I am a little bit congested. My eyes have been just like like sandpaper. I, I need some eye drops. I need some allergy meds. I had some Benadryl at the house, but I didn't want to be a zombie all day long. I'm thinking, yeah, Benadryl puts me out. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I just didn't sleep that good, but I feel like crap, man. I feel hungover. That's why I don't have coffee this morning. I'm drinking water because I just feel hungover, right. like. I don't know, but I didn't dr- I didn't drink anything last night. We a friend brought a flamethrower over and we 
like literally a flamethrower. I was going to say that's not like a, a term for like a drug device or anything. You're talking about like a flame shooting device. Yeah, and something they use like in Vietnam. Yeah, we went down to my fire pit and lit it on fire and cut up some wood and sat by the fire. Didn't drink a beer, actually, mainly because we didn't even start the fire until like 930. And I knew like, man, if I start drinking now, right, it's over. I'm not going to be able to get up tomorrow morning. So now is that something like y'all Jimmy rigged or is this like actual like a legal it's legal, legal. Buy, really. Yeah. So you can actually buy and you sell buy one of those. Now. He uses the same little propane tank that I use for my gas grill. You screw it onto the bottom, and it's just basically this big tube with a little trigger at the front, and you pull it. And that's wild, man. Uh, Vietnam was the last war like they used flamethrowers. Yeah, those got outlawed, didn't they? I mean, like not just like outlawed. Like I'm not talking about like I'm talking like in war, like the NATO or or whatever, uh, whatever the UN made them illegal to use during warfare or something well i know from a you remember mail call with arlie ermy oh yeah if i remember right from that he said i mean more you know servicemen died just using them and we're not even talking to it because i mean you got a, a bomb on your back uh, oh yeah no shot, you're you're fucking oh nervous. absolutely i i remember watching saving private ryan and one of them had a flamethrower mm-hmm. and i remember like saying like man i would not want to be the guy they send into nah, war with man. that thing no nah. Thanks, I mean, modern flamethrowers are a little bit different now, though. I mean, you don't have to carry this giant pack on your back. Right, you know? and you nobody's it. shooting at you, I, I hope. Yeah, I mean, I really wouldn't. I mean, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, burning people is, I guess, a, a way to kill them, but I would see flamethrowers more useful for, like, destroying enemy strongholds and stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Like, I, I wouldn't want to go into war with a flamethrower. Nah, man, I, I wouldn't want to go anywhere with one. <laughs> I don't even want to go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go in the grocery store with a flamethrower. <laughs> I don't want to go into church with a flamethrower. I don't want to go nowhere with a flamethrower. Well, I hope you wouldn't go into church with a flamethrower. No, nah, no, nah, I wouldn't. I, I I barely go to church as it is. Unless so. you had them up your sleeves and you wanted to trick people in thinking you were the devil and you're like, Phew. oh, man. Oh. I've been watching, my girlfriend's been watching that show Lucifer, and I've I've watched a few episodes with it. It's not a bad show. Yeah, I, I really I never had an intention like to, to watch it. You know, we I actually got to meet the uh, woman that plays his mother in I that show. That we hung, way, right? yeah, we hung out with her yeah. for. We talked to her for like twenty minutes or so. She's really nice, really, really skinny though. Like, is really that small. the the same chick from uh, Battlestar Galactica? Or not? Is it? I don't know. I don't watch I, Battlestar. I, 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 I thought you would. You had said that she was also on that. Maybe I watch. I watched like the first season. And, and I hadn't I watched know. Battlestar Galactica, so I can't remember. Um, that's good, man. But uh, but that's not a bad show. The guy that plays Lucifer, I, I like the way they do. You know, they, it's just it's a different portrayal of uh, than you would think. Being it's the devil, but it's a, it's a, it's a not a bad show. Right, it's a Fox series, right? I she watches it on Netflix. Okay. So I don't. Know. Sure I know that the is. network had dropped wrong. it, and I think Netflix picked it up. Oh, for real. But um. Been watching, watch that in Umbrella Academy. I gotta say, man, Umbrella Academy. I was slow to watch because that was a show I saw. Just everybody was raving about, and even these people I know that normally aren't into not just comics, but they're not even into that type of thing, and they loved it. So I was like, I, I was, but I'm on the eighth or ninth episode, eighth, I think. I can't remember. I'm on, I'm on the eighth or ninth episode now, and I love it. Like, it's an awesome show. Yeah, man. I've heard nothing but good things. The only thing I haven't jumped right on is just, you know, and I know it's not like standard superhero stuff, but, you know, between movies and, and comics every week, I, I just, I don't know. I didn't want, like, my TV watching to, I, I was just a little oversaturated with, with that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, but I hear really good this things. This is a good I, one, though, because it's not your typical, like, superhero yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's not like uh, in game or anything like that. I mean, it's 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 different. It's really good though. I yeah, highly it's, recommend it. It's I give on it, my watch list for sure. I give it two thumbs up. I know, I don't think I know that you'll like it. Yeah, well, a lot a lot like uh, like that. The boys that's dropping soon on Amazon. So what I'm, were we talking about? Weren't we talking about maybe doing the podcasting about that? Yeah, man, I wouldn't mind uh, like maybe watching the whole series and then doing just a, an overall you know review of it. I don't know if it's if they're going to drop the whole season all at once. They're going to re- release it weekly. I, I don't know. But. We're also going to try and well, we are going to ain't no try. We are, but we're going to be covering Watchmen when that comes out. Yeah, man. And like I said, our uh, our friend Matt Crowder. I know he's uh, read pretty much the whole boys uh, comic series, so I'm sure he uh, you know he'll have an interesting insight. And Garth Ennis wrote it. You know, I know you're a big Garth Ennis. Yeah, fan. man. I think he's, he's awesome. work on the Punisher and Preacher and all that stuff. Hopefully, the boys is 
better than the Preacher series. I think when I started, when I got into I mean, the, the Preacher TV series, just to clarify, I think when I picked up the Punisher run of, I think it was like 2016. wasn't it got pretty. I know Stephen Dillon was doing the doing the art. Wasn't Garth Ennis writing it? Yeah, yeah. For the first couple issues. Oh, no, for. Well, did he write this one? I, don't, I know no, that he's. he's not, know, he didn't write it. What he wrote? No, what was it? He wrote. He wrote. He wrote the one that was uh, Punisher. It was like when he was back in Nam. Punisher Matt. He did write that. But didn't he write another series though that was like in another dimension? Like a like I mean it was like a parallel. It was kinda like just a an, it wasn't in the six one six universe, but it was like the Punisher Max or yeah, something. Punisher Max. I've got That's most what I'm of that series, about. man. When you were helping me uh, move stuff around the other day, man, I wish I, I meant to show you my Punisher run. I've got most of Garth Ennis's run on uh, on Punisher, both between Marvel Knights and uh, Punisher Max. That's right. Cause Stephen Dillon was drawing it and he unfortunately mm-hmm. passed away. Um, I think it was like October or November of 2016. Yeah. But um, I just really like his art. Oh, yeah, man. He's terrific. It's just really, I mean, what I like about it is all of his art looks, looks alike in the sense of, you know, I mean, it's, you can look at it in, in a way that like when you look at it, you can tell Stephen Dillon drew it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it all kind of has that preacher look to it, but right. uh, that's what I loved about it. Yeah, man, I really liked Steve Dillon. I mean, I can't. I mean, I have the little in memorial thing on my comic wall. Not oh, yeah. so much because I'm like, oh, I'm a diehard Stephen Dillon fan. I just thought it was a very touch, and I loved Preacher, oh, yeah. and I just thought it was a very touching little tribute they did with Jesse from uh, Preacher. With you know, it's been quite a party, ain't it? So I put that up, but I mean, I do really like Stephen Dillon's artwork. I know, man, I know you're a. It kills you seeing that big run of preacher they've got over there at the comic shop. And just, man, don't even get me started. Yeah, don't even get me started. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's a nice chunk of comics. I don't know. It's it's one of those things. I don't know if you'd be better off uh, buying them issue by issue or buying them in one big chunk like that. But you know, I told you a while back. I was trying to figure out what kind of like big run I wanted to try to collect through the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I decided one that's uh, I'd really like and one that's attainable. Peter David's run on Incredible Hulk. Oh, there you go. Because I've got most of his run. Like one that's the, the one you got the storyboard for, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's actual like from Marvel Studios. They were using it in production. I caught him at a Comic Con. He signed it. It's from Incredible Hulk issue something or another. You don't actually see the Hulk in it, but it's still really cool. Because you said it would have been crazy expensive if the Hulk yeah, was Yeah, dude. Right. He, he had maybe one or two where you get a glimpse of the Hulk, and yeah, he was asking pretty big money for it. But uh, but that's pretty cool to have like the whole run and to be able to put that with it. You know oh, I mean? yeah, dude. Or like find that comic. Mm-hmm. in that run and put it you know display it beside that's what i would do like have the whole run but i would find that one particular issue mm-hmm. and then like you know get it put in a picture frame or or, or maybe even get it graded and put it next to oh yeah that dude. storyboard that'd be because jp was this weekend uh it was really cool jp is taking one of his rooms and turning it into more of like a study slash like I don't even like calling my man cave a man cave, but at the end of the day, I just don't know what to call it. Yeah. So I call it the man cave, even though I hate saying that. But um, JP's kind of turning it not so much a man cave, but more like a study. It's got like his action figures and his statues and his comics and his books, and we were working on that this weekend, and it, it's 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 going to be pretty tight. Yeah, I, I pretty pretty much it's my study, and that's my comic nook, right? You know, which it does take up like half the room, so it's a little bit more than a nook. But that's what I'm going to call it. But yeah, man, Peter David, he's been one of my favorite writers through the years. Like growing up, he did Aquaman, the, the run where he, he got his he lost his hand and has the harpoon yeah. hand. And later on he did Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man. Really great run on that. I don't I don't agree with his politics and I'm not getting into that, but uh, overall, man, I have liked his uh, his work over the years. Well, uh, and that's, and going back to the man cave thing, you know, I think everybody, men and women, need that if they have room for it in yeah. their home. Like, I feel like, you know, I, I meet some people that talk about, like, man cave is like a man-child thing. And I'm no, like, get so the stupid. hell out of here, man. Whatever makes you, like, mine has everything from sports to comics to memories, like pictures mm-hmm. of people. Like, up on my, I've got, like, where my bar, I have a bar in my man cave, and above the bar is the duct work. Um, you know, where the AC, where the air and everything comes from. Well, I've got that covered in pictures. So, like, when you're sitting at the bar, you can look up and you see all of these great memories and things like that. And it makes me happy as hell. It's like my little fortress of solitude. Like, I go down there and I'll have a beer, maybe put, you know, listen to a, a record and, you know, just or, or, or drink some whiskey and just sit down there and relax. And, you know, you'll have some people that'll be like, you know, oh, it's so man-childish. It's the Peter Pan complex. It's like, eat. 
I'm not going to say what I want to say. Eat dick. Just right, say yeah, Eat a dick. A, like, I mean, whatever makes you happy makes you happy. Like, I like that. Like, and that's something we had talked about. Like, mm-hmm. we get tired of the people that's like, you know, like if you read comics, isn't that for children? Number one, if you read half the comics I read, I you'd think you'd be a pretty terrible parent to let a child read some of this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. And at the end of the day, it's like, man, whatever makes you happy makes you happy. My mom is in her 50s, and she collects I Love Lucy dolls. She's got like a whole little... Right thing with them and i'm like what makes you happy makes you happy man i'm a damn man you know what i'm saying yeah, like i don't it's not a man a child penis. thing i've right. seen it <laughs> it's glorious right but it's like you know i mean I, I hate the the stigma that goes with that of like you know oh you read comics or you yada yada you have a men cave isn't yes. that it's like get the hell over yourself it's man it's crazy man most of the people that say that are just in a position where they can't have one like their wife won't let them have mm-hmm. one or you know the, the the i don't i don't know but it, yeah, it, it irritates the hell out of me. It's Which, luckily, I will say that, but I've not had one person walk into my man cave and be like, "Oh my god, yeah, is well, this is your room or a kid?" You know, I mean, everybody that comes down in there genuinely is like, "Wow, this is cool as hell." But yeah, man, I mean, for one thing, geek culture is a lot more accepted now than it used to. Don't be. Don't that kind of make you, know, you mad? It does. Like twenty years ago, man, I, I catch all kinds of shit at high in high school, you know, and now those same guys that were giving me shit. Or, you know, putting stuff on their Facebook like, you know, oh, check out this uh, Yoda sculpture I got out on my front porch or something. I was like, dude, just I'm wondering where Star Wars, you realize, all right, so it's just talking about like trends here. And I I feel you now. I never really caught as much crap about it. But I do know like, you know, people that I've met have been like, you know, oh, I read comics and got picked on for it. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, luckily I never, maybe it's because I didn't really broadcast it hardcore. I, you know, read comics, but I didn't walk around wearing like Marvel shirts and stuff. And maybe that, I don't know, but like getting into like, like the trends where, all right, I'd say females ages. There's this trend where females ages, like I'd say right now they're probably in their mid twenties, mm-hmm. mid going to their late twenties, you know, but, but, but like maybe six years back, there just was this revolution of like young girls who were really into Star Wars as far as they got tattoos. And I'm not calling mm-hmm. anybody out specifically. I mean, right. some of them might have just genuinely loved Star Wars. And yeah. for them, you know, cool. But they got tattoos and they had like the back. Like, did you notice that? There was like this trend back, you know, a few years back where just young girls really got into Star Wars. Yeah, man. I, well, I mean, you And know, even though I don't think half of them have ever watched a right. Star Wars, but. Yeah, man, just uh, com- I think Hot Topic had a lot to do with it. There's that's them a, making it's a good point. Yep. T-shirts that look cool and had stuff like that on it. That's a good point. I think geek culture in general. I think you know the rise of the MCU had a lot to do with it. Oh, like yeah. movies like The Dark Knight. It just, made superheroes cool, right? Just actual movies that weren't like Batman Forever, where you know, oh, okay, you know, right? P- movies people could actually go and get into and appreciate. I think that had a lot, a lot to do with it. And stores like Hot Topic, just a change of the tides, which in a way, I mean, yeah, it's awesome. But on the other hand, it kind of, I don't know, before it was kind of like a, a niche thing, you know, just like you enjoyed it kind of on the underground. I don't, I don't know. I feel, you know, I and, mean, you I, know, shows like Big Bang Theory, I think that had a lot to do with it. That's a good point. And as far as the MCU helping it, I think you're right. It's a number of things like the Big Bang Theory, definitely. And as much as people love to hate on that show, I do got to admit, like the times I've watched it, um, there have been some points. They've, they have they definitely have done their research sometimes mm-hmm. when it comes to comic culture, though, right, because right. they have some very interesting like arguments, like talking about Thor's hammer. Like, you know, so if he sets it on an elevator and the elevator goes up, is the elevator worthy? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, or would the elevator not be able to go up? Just I mean, so there are things they say as much as. People get mad at it for popularizing geek culture. I mean, some things they do talk about, it's not definitely not like it doesn't seem like it's written by people that aren't into comics. Mm-hmm. It definitely seems like comic writers were brought in or people that read comics to help, uh, you know, give them direction on that. But do you think the MCU helping geek culture, do you think that's a testament to how well written they are? Oh, you, yeah, dude. Because superhero I mean, movies now, I feel half of them, it's a cry and shame they don't get you know, uh, Oscar nods and things like that, like Endgame and, and Infinity War. I mean, you know, which I mean, I know that I'm not saying they haven't been any, but I'm saying it's not a regular thing that superhero yeah, man, movies. Yeah, it's mostly like technical effects and stuff. They, they don't get like actor. You know, <clears> right. Like, I mean, you got people like movie. Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson, like just really out there acting their asses off in these movies and making you want to cry and 
just invest, you know, they're, they're acting, so, you know, just really mm-hmm. good. And you don't see any of, or best picture nods, which didn't yeah. Black Panther get something like that? I, I think it might have. Like, I, I used to watch the uh, the Oscars religiously, man. I just love the tradition and the ceremony. But after it got like, and it always, you know, I mean, Hollywood's always been uh, political. political and leftist. But after it got so on the nose, dude, I was just like, eh, thanks, but no thanks. I'm like that with any politics, man. Right. Like, I don't, I don't want any kind of politics in my stuff. I don't care if it's left, right, up, down. I don't give a damn, man. I want to watch. Yeah, but you're man. right. I mean, it has always been there. It's been a platform for celebrities. But I think the MCU's writing and the fact that they didn't just write superhero movies, they wrote compelling superhero movies with characters that, you know, you just could relate to. I think that, I, like I said, I just, I think the MCU is just on fire, man. Yeah, man. Just, I, I really do. I told our friend Matt, and I don't think he agreed, and that's fine. But I think that we've witnessed the climax of the MCU with Endgame. Yeah, I've heard you I, say I that. Think you that might be I, right. I'm not at all saying they're going to go away after this, or they're not going to be very popular. But I feel like right now is the highest they're going to fly. Now they might just take it. You know, they might if they're if they're a bird flying, they might come down a couple of feet and soar at that height. I think this is the the height of Marvel's cinematic universe. I mean. Just depending on what they do. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. If they're like, we're Brit, which slight spoiler alerts for Endgame. But my God, it's been like three weeks. You've had, I've seen it three times mm-hmm. now. You've, you've had time to see it. Um, but slight spoilers, it won't last but a second. But I mean, if they're like, oh, we're going to bring back Captain America and Iron Man. And they're talking like original, you know, like Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. Then, of course, it's going to go right back up. Right. But I just feel like where they're going after that, there's just some titles coming out, which then again, I could be wrong because like I didn't care anything, didn't even read nor I only time only thing I knew about the Guardians of the Galaxy is when they had like crossovers. Mm-hmm. Didn't know diddly squat about them, and it's one of my favorites of the Marvel you know universe. I think Guardians of the Galaxy one and two. Some people shit you know shit on two, but I thought right. two was really oh yeah, good. I loved it too. Um, but you know they made that good, but it's some things they're coming out with that I just don't care about. Like yeah. I mean like the Inhumans and, and things like that. I just really don't. Well, see maybe. them making that, which they did try to do a show and that failed miserably. I really, uh, you know, I, I wasn't a big fan of Captain Marvel. I really hope that's not kind of like setting the tone for what's going on going forth. I am, I am optimistic just that like they brought James Gunn back for the next Guardians of the Galaxy. That, uh, that makes Chris me Hemsworth just signed on, yeah, so he's, he's sticking with it. I mean, honestly, Thor Ragnarok is one of the best films oh, in the yeah, MCU, man. Like, I. I lo- and they said the reason for that, the director, I can't think of his name and I apologize, but he, he you know, he plays Korg in mm-hmm. the movie, but he's awesome. Like they said, when he came in, like, you know, he talked to Chris Hemsworth and, you know, they say Chris Hemsworth is just so funny and, and genuine in real life. Like he's one of the most beloved of their cast and that this director saw that and mm-hmm. was like, you know, I want to incorporate more of you into the character. Like, you know, Thor, like kind of like you said, like Thor is not from earth he's like this asgardian like god of you know thunder and lightning so i mean he should be a little bit goofier yeah, and we I mean, should make the, him more fun yeah, you know thor historically is the god of like a beer drinking and you know womanizing so. like we get all the seriousness with things like black panther and right. which i mean I, black panther had been made at that point but i mean you get all the seriousness with all these other marvel films let's have a little fun with it and thor ragnarok not only has you know amazing action and story but it's Freaking hilarious. Yeah, man. But I'm, I'm hoping with these more obscure, like, Marvel properties, I hope they do what they did with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And he, I mean, Iron Man was a pretty obscure hero up until, you know, they did what they did with him. What they should do. Well, Stan, yeah, you're right. But, I mean, Iron Man definitely had more traction than, like, Guardians of the Galaxy as far as being popular. Yeah, but, I, I mean, really, I mean, outside of Civil War, that was the big Iron Man moment. I mean, unless you were, like, a Marvel fanboy, like, I never really knew shit about uh, Iron Man, to be honest. Until and the, see, that's crazy. Movie. I knew a little bit about him watching yeah. the movie. But not, I won't by any means say I'm like I was an expert in quoting right. issues. But, I mean, I knew... You know, a little bit more about Iron Man, because I read some Iron Man growing up. But more or less, too, now that you mention that, I think a lot of the Iron Man that I read was when he was in, like, Captain America's or, like, the Avengers or mm-hmm. something. I never really—I don't know that I really straight up got Iron Man himself. You yeah, know what man. I mean? It's funny. Like, I, I read a while back when—it so, was Sony that has the rights to spider had the rights yeah, to Spider-Man, yeah. right? When when they bought the rights to Spider-Man, they had a great deal. They could have bought the, pro, the rights to all those characters— and the guy in charge of Sony was just like, man, who cares about Thor and Captain America? Forget that. We want Spider Man. That's it. I mean, there could have been an MCU, you know, year, I, 20 well, years ago. And, you know, part of me wants to be like, 
Because I think Sam Raimi, Raimi did a great job of the first two Spider-Man movies. The third one is just like, he felt like he just was like, yeah, yeah this is the last one I'm going to do. I don't really care. Kind of the way people are saying Game of Thrones right. is this season. Just kind of just, yeah. but I mean, Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire, in my opinion, is one, I think you might have said this exact, but I agree. I think it's one of the greatest superhero films of all time. Oh, Not just one of the man. best Spider-Man movies. And don't get me wrong, I love Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland is the perfect Spider-Man. I think that he is probably mm-hmm. the best of all worlds. Like he gets Peter Parker down, the awkwardness, the, you know, he plays that well. He plays Spider-Man well, but Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man 2, man, that whole movie with Doc Ock, that was an excellent movie. No, I loved it, man. I borrowed that from a Ebert. Like I used to watch Ebert and Roper religiously every what Saturday or Sunday morning or whatever. And he said when it came out, he was like, this is the best superhero movie of all, you know, to date. Yeah, like the first one was good. This yeah. one was phenomenal. And at the time, man, I can't think of a superhero movie that you could Topped put above it. that. When right. it came out, man, I mean, you know, I loved Batman uh, uh, Returns or whatever. But, I mean, up to that point, man, nothing really got me emotionally invested right, in a yeah. superhero's journey like Spider-Man. And he had a well-written villain, too. Oh, like yeah, It was like, man. you know, you didn't just have this one-dimensional villain that's like, Mwahaha, I'm the evil movie was for tough, evil. Though. Like, you felt for Doc Ock. And, and that was the only one, that was the one good thing Sam Raimi, Raimi did in Spider-Man 3, though. I do say, as much as that movie can be, can be crapped on, mm-hmm. the one redeeming quality it has is Sandman. I thought that he wrote Sand, or you know, they wrote Sandman to be very good. And I mean, like you really felt for him, like yeah. he was, you know, I mean, like even more so than Doc Ock. I mean, it's this guy that turned to a life of crime pretty much to save his daughter, and mm-hmm. just, I mean, he wasn't a bad guy by any means. Like he was only going after Spider Man because every attempt he made to like get money for his daughter to save her for her treatments and stuff, Spider Man interjected because Spider Man didn't know what was going on, and so you know, yeah. it's so. Yeah. That, but Doc Ock was also just a very well written villain. The guy that played him, I thought, did a great job. Yeah, man, that that scene. On I want to go uh, watch it now. Let's just train, skip work. Yeah, that scene. Let's go train watch Spider Man too. When, like Doc Ock's got Spider Man after Spider Man stopped the train from derailing. Yeah, and all everyone just stands up. You know, they pass him, pass him over top, and his masks off, and they're like, "We won't tell anybody." Yeah, that that was some powerful. Very stuff. touching moment, man. Yeah, yeah really I, I loved Spider Man too, man. Um, but. I got way off track just because yeah, I love man. it so much. But anyways, what I was getting at was yeah, that Spider-Man aside really aside from those, you know, I'm kind of glad Sony didn't get the rights to all of them. Yeah, dude. Because I mean, I, I don't think it, it would have. No. You know, which I haven't seen Venom yet. I've heard from several people that it, the critics hated it, but I've heard from several people that it's a decent movie. I, I saw it. I, I really want to rewatch it to. <clears throat> to give it a, a a fair shake, I don't know, man. I was watching. It I just don't I, get I how like, you have it without Spider Man. Yeah, dude. I, I don't know. I just I kind of felt like it was pretty standard fare. I, you know, I didn't. I, I just didn't see anything that really stood out to me. But I do want to rewatch it and give it a, a fair. I shake. mean, he doesn't shoot webs or anything in this, right? Because you remember Venom gets a lot of his like you know it retained a lot of Spider Man's abilities from when Spider Man had the the symbiote, and then it got on Eddie Brock, and right. he was able to like shoot webs and. All of that stuff. And it was, it, I mean, it's, I just don't get, you know, but he didn't do any web shooting or anything in this one, did he? I don't think so, man. I'm not going to lie. I was uh, I was a little encumbered when I saw it. Mm. But um, I, I don't know. Like I said, man, I didn't walk out just being like, man, that was awesome. I was just like, okay, well, that was another superhero movie. Right, so. yeah. Didn't stand out. Right. And man, like I said, I might go back and rewatch it and be like, man, that was a really, really tight movie. So. I said I, I would like to to rewatch. Yeah, but uh, you know I'm glad Sony didn't get the rights to all of that. And but no, I think the MCU just gave you like superhero movies again that were just compelling. Like you felt yeah, for the man. characters, you laughed, you wanted to cry. Like they definitely didn't just stick with one format. That needs to be what they do. What they need to do is just give James Gunn all of the obscure titles. You yeah. know what I mean? Things like the Inhumans or. What are they like? I I saw. I don't know what to believe. I've seen lists of upcoming movies that they're working on, but I don't know how much of it's true and how much is not. You know. Yeah, dude. I'm not. I'm not uh, banking on anything until uh, you know until a little bit later. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know exactly, but yeah, just let James Gunn take the titles that aren't quite as well known and let him spruce them up. Because mm-hmm. I mean, he does. Like I said. Some people really crap on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy too, but I really liked it. Like I left the theater very happy, and then when I was reading where people were like, you know, oh, it wasn't as good, you know, it doesn't hold up to the rest. I, mm-hmm. 
It's like, man, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I like it more than the first one, per se. I'd have to watch them back to back to really give you that. I mean, you know, I liked it just as much, man. I, I would mean, say so. That that was my thought leaving the theater. I definitely thought like it felt it because some movies you go see the first one and you see the second one. And the second one feels like they try to take it in a whole different direction or it wasn't even, you know, it, it almost felt like it had two different writers or something. This one definitely felt like just a straight up, you know, c- continuation of the first one. Yeah, man. I, I just I think people like the villain was a lot less traditional he had less traditional motives and i don't know man i loved kurt russell a lot I, I, i'm everything. a big yeah i love kurt russell man i mean i him and tombstone we were just talking about the other day how how awesome he is mm-hmm. i love kurt russell yeah man i, I think it just kind of like came out of left field for a lot of people like you know yeah. like some uh, celestial god who wants to just spread his seed all over the universe what the fuck is which this? i mean you know? ego's a character in the comics because i heard somebody go he was a living planet that's so stupid mm-hmm. and i was like well i mean that's straight out of the comics though i mean yeah. i don't know you know i didn't read guardians so i don't know how much of of uh, how you know i don't know but i do know that the the thought of it being stupid that he was a living planet like i mean that's that's straight out of the comics in the comics he looks like a planet with a face right I mean, who's to say a planet can't be sentient? Who's to say our planet's not sentient? Uh, there are know. some people that think we do live on a living planet. Yeah, man. There there was some Native American activist way back in the day who said one day the planet's going to shake us off it like a dog with fleas or something. So That's a scary thought. Yeah, it is, man. We'll burn up in the atmosphere, perhaps. Yeah, we could. That is a cool thought. Think about that. Like, you know, like fleas yeah, on a dog. What if, what if yeah. we're just uh, a microorganism on another microorganism and the universe is just some big living being? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's. And a lot of people think that we were introduced to this planet, you know, extraterrestrially, whether it was microorganisms on an asteroid or something like that. Or, you know, if you want to get into the ancient alien, like genetic engineering theory. But As ancient astronaut theorists believe. Yeah. A lot of people think we're really not of this earth. And that's why we really don't, you know, do well on this earth as far as, you know, poisoning everything. So I don't know. Interesting to think about. I'm not saying I've subscribed to any of that, but mm. interesting to think about. So what kind of conspiracy stuff are you into these days? Man, I really hadn't been a... Uh, it's just you know how it is. It's been so much going on with work and family, and I, I really hadn't a uh, new girlfriend hadn't been diving into a too much lately. So I man, it's weird not hearing you talking about something. Yeah, and very plus I'm there. not a you know I'm not working my uh, my night job as much. My nine to five at the at the uh, is supermarket. that when you listen to podcasts? So yeah, I'm not like just needing to plug in and dive into podcasts as much. I'm still listening to them, but just like I said, I'm not. Uh, eight hours a day i'm not stuck somewhere i hate you know just needing to have something in my ears so we've got a cool podcast that may be coming out uh we we actually met with a good friend of mine that i used to podcast with back in the day yesterday we had lunch with him and uh, i hadn't seen him in well over a year or so so it was really good to catch up with him and uh He's a big country, and I mean, he he now Josh, his name's Josh, and he would not like that I'm saying this, but it's the truth. He is what I would call a country music expert. Oh like yeah, he 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 doesn't he he hates that title. When I worked with him, and I would say it, he'd be like, "Man, I'm not an expert." And I'm like, "Dude, an expert, someone who knows a crap ton about a subject, and you know more than any. I mean, more than half the artists know about their own music, you know." Uh, and JP himself, JP is a country music enthusiast. JP definitely yeah, doesn't like it. the title I'm expert, but JP know. knows a lot more than you would think about country, like classic country music. We're not talking about Florida Georgia Line here. We're talking about way on back to the outlaw stuff. So for those, I won't be on it. I might help produce it and work behind the scenes. And now if they do Johnny Cash or something. I might come on there just because right. I really like Johnny Cash. I'm in no means close to an expert, but I would just enjoy the conversation. But um, I'll be working more behind the scenes, but uh, yesterday there was some good chemistry going there, and uh, they're thinking about doing a uh, like almost a documentary style mm-hmm. podcast where they'll take a case. So if you're we, and I say that the reason I bring that up is because we've actually had people when JP's talked about loving old country music comment and say I love all that old stuff, Merle and Johnny Paycheck and all the old. Oh, yeah. You know, so for those listeners that are into that kind of thing, be, I mean, that's that's months out, but that is something that and I don't know that it'll even be on this channel, but it will definitely be uh, a, a sister podcast of what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. So that's something that might be coming out in a while. So if you're a country music fan, it's pretty exciting because I'm going to tell you between JP and Josh, you're definitely going to learn some really cool stuff with country music history. I mean, Josh has an encyclopedia that's like half my height. Yeah, dude. It's and crazy. the shelf still here at the studio. I'm definitely gonna have to do uh, do my homework. That's for sure. But no, I'm excited. I love uh, I love classic country music. I I, just, I love classic music in general. But definitely country. You know, 
Yeah, I think it's going to be a great show. Like I said, and Josh, I mean, like when I take a vacation, I get away from everything. I go to, you know, I go down and I, I brag on it. It's not that exotic. I mean, I've, I definitely could be going to other states and uh, out of the country and stuff. But every year I just go to Ocean Lakes right. in South Carolina because it's just like my heaven. I pretty much grew up there, so I love it. But when Josh goes on vacation, Josh takes vacations to like country music stars, houses and I mean, he was just telling us just this like a week or two ago, they went to Graceland and saw Elvis's property. And then they went and drove the circle driveway around Hank Williams Sr.'s home. Yeah, dude. When he first mentioned that, I thought, oh, they've, they've like set up like a, a historical like site where Hank Sr. lived. But no, it's just a private residence. It's a private. Just, Josh don't care, man. The, Josh yeah, don't care. He just driveway. rolled in and like, rolled oh. around it. That's cool. You know? I mean, he he's into it, man. I mean, yeah. I think Josh, I think it's safe to say Josh is more than happy to get arrested. Oh, being yeah, able I, to I say that he went to Hank Williams' yeah, house. Man. I think it's awesome. I did, like I said, it just wasn't what I was expecting. I figured, you know, it'd be like, yeah, here's a picture of us in the gift shop. <laughs> but was, here's the welcome center for the Hank Williams home. Right. Nope. It's, and didn't he say somebody was living there? Yeah. yeah he said they yeah, pulled out and he a, pulled right in and just. I think that, I think he said that might have been Minnie Pearl's house. That was it. Yeah. It was Minnie Pearl's. He said that somebody was, because he said it's on the border. It's next to something. The, like the governor's mansion. Yeah. He said that, he said that Hank Williams' house was, you know, not what you would expect as an in a sense of, you know, it wasn't a huge mansion. It just was a regular kind of house, but. Minnie Pearl actually had a straight up mansion. Yeah, like even by today's standards, it was crazy. humongous. But he loves it, man. So I mean, that's so. If you're into classic country, that is, and I, the re- and the reason I'm not going to be on it's because I I like classic country and being, but that comes from like being friends with Josh so long, being friends with JP. I mean, my love, my I'm not going to even say love. My enjoyment of classic country music has come from. I mean, I was straight up like hard rock is what I've always really been into in '90s and stuff, but. Uh, being around, you can't be around it but so long before you start picking up things that you oh, like. Yeah, and uh, so I, I am excited to and to man, listen to this. This might could branch off into a whole new like multiple music stuff. Like you could head up some kind of like alt rock kind of. I could get you on there and do like '90s rock. Yeah, I was gonna say that's something I really have to brush up on. That that's kind of like to me what classic country is to you. I enjoy it, but I really don't know a whole. It lot wasn't about your it. passion, per se. right? Right. I really don't know. Like I mean, I I like Nirvana. I like you know whatever, whatever. I used to watch VH1's Behind the Music mm-hmm. religiously, man. Like yeah. when they would do like the Goo Goo Dolls and Van. Oh, I don't know if they did. They do Van Halen. They might have done sure Van Halen. I know they, they did, did Bon everybody. Jovi, and I know they did like Metallica. Yeah. Oh man, I love that show. I used to tape it. Like I had like back in the day yeah, these the things VCR called VCRs, program. and yeah. sometimes they would have like record buttons on them. So I'd put a blank tape mm-hmm. and and record like the behind. I probably got them somewhere at my mom's house. I was gonna say, man, I need to look at my tapes. I've got a lot of old stuff recorded, like old wrestling pay per views. X Games. Like I used to record like the X Games, yeah. some baseball games. They used to record a lot of stuff on there. Music yeah. videos. I made like one cassette tape. And I might have given it to my high school girlfriend. I can't remember, but it was basically like early 2000s rock. And whenever the videos would come on Fuse, because back then MTV, it switched. Mm -hmm. It was on its way to being just shows and not music anymore. Fuse was still around. And I think it was called MMUSA before that. I think it comes out of, yeah, I thought it came out of Canada. Maybe I'm, I don't know. It's been so long, but MMUSA, I would sit there and, Wait for a music video for a song that I like, and I would hit record, and once the video was done, I'd stop it. So I have like a mixtape, but it's a cassette uh-huh. of music videos. Yeah, dude. You know what I hate, though, that I'm kicking myself for? when I A lot of times I'd tape like Nicktoons or something. Oh, yeah. I always cut out the commercials, and I'm just like, it, it really takes away from the experience going back and watching it now. Like, right. man, I wish I could see those old commercials that I was, you know. It's funny how that works, right? Then. Yeah, like back then I was like, man, fuck these commercials. I ain't trying to watch those when I go back and rewatch, but... And I'm like, man, that would be so. Because I'll go on YouTube sometimes and see the old commercials or the old solicits for like Cat Dog or mm-hmm. Ren and Stimpy or something. Kind of like Andy Bernard said on The Office. I wish when we were in the good old days, somebody would tell us that we were in the good. Like then yeah. you really just wanted to, you didn't want to watch the commercials. You were tired of commercials. But now I'll go on YouTube sometime and sometimes and look up like 90s commercials and I'd watch like a mm-hmm. whole 10 minute video of just commercials from the 90s but back in the 90s you wanted to skip right through them yeah man i was watching a video essay or something a while back and he he was saying like 90s is really the last decade for nostalgia because now just everything nothing's really lost you know everything's Everything's just there record it you know you can go back to 2005 and see what you were putting on facebook i was gonna say yeah just get on your facebook and go back in time 
you know Facebook's pretty much for old people now? Oh, yeah, dude. And I say that including ourselves. Yeah, like, yeah, you absolutely. know, like uh, my little brother is 19 and he has a Facebook, but he keeps it deactivated because he said none of his friends are on Facebook. You know, yeah, man. I mean, when, when something Snapchat like that, when stuff. all your parents and even your grandparents are on there, it's officially lame. Right. You know, I, I miss mean, MySpace. Yeah, yeah, I was on there a little bit. I, I was, I, I didn't really dive into the social media much. I had a MySpace. I deleted it. I had a Facebook. Mine was probably so it, douchey, but. man. Like I think I had a famous stars and stripes background and skulls and mm. like. I, but I mean, I like like and Facebook's going this way now. But like, I like now that Facebook's added this way. You can put a song on your profile yeah. and you can add music to your thing. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's great for sharing music because I can go to a friend's profile and see what they've been listening to and check yeah, it out, man. see if I like it. But yeah. I just liked how MySpace, like you could tell what mood somebody was in by like the song that started playing when mm-hmm. their page loaded. Because remember, things had to load back then and yeah, were really is. slow. And it, I, it was it was messed up. It's cool being able to rank your friends, you know. That <laughs> is really messed up when yeah. you think about but it. Yeah, like, it was just like you could really – people knew uh, knew where they stood at least. You know? I'm proud to say I was in quite a few top tens. In fact, I was, I was in I was in a few top fives. In mm-hmm. fact, I might have been number one on a few profiles. I uh, Yeah. I which is really a, hard, though. If I, more than one person has you as number one, right. then you got to like, oh, God, yeah, you know, Jake, them, Cameron, yeah. and, and James or whoever have me at number one. Which one do I put at number one? I was I was a, a sought-after free agent for a, for a brief stint, you know. Do you remember the good feeling where there was a girl that you had a crush on and you saw that, she, like, y'all talked a lot, you were friends, you know, and you saw she moved you into, like, her top ten? Yeah, man, and some some people would even put like like friend like like you know I, I don't know they'd put up a, a picture and say why they love this person and then another picture this is why I love this person like oh it's mainly a chick thing but I'm gonna take you know, way it back. You feel good man. I'm gonna take you way back. You okay. remember ICQ? I I didn't have, text I, me. Hold on, hold on. Text me real quick all right. for those that don't remember ICQ. Let me. Um, no, I do like AIM and stuff like that. I didn't have enough friends to, really? to have stuff like that. Yeah. Well, text me. Check this out. All right. This will take you back for people that used it. Yeah, I was going to say, it'll take them back. It won't take me back. Yeah, dude. I, I was late to the party on everything as far as that's concerned. Yeah. I texted you. Man, that is the that is the ICQ notification. The little oh man, I used ICQ. I love. Here's what'll take you back if you did use ICQ. Do you remember shout outs? Like you could do like basically you had your username, and then what you could do is you could go in there, and there was like this little section where you could mm-hmm. put about me or whatever. Right. And what a lot of people did, what all the cool kids did, I guess, um, was they they would give shout outs to people or like. Or, or like what they would do is they'd put like your name and then like a memory and then like they would put like this. So it'd be like JP, oh my mama, mm-hmm. uh, Maddie D, um, whatever. You know what I mean? Like right, they, right. they would, and I remember like having a crush on a girl and like, you know, trying really hard to get with her. And I remember the day like on her ICQ, she put me in her thing and had like a memory of going to the movies or something. Oh, snap. And it's just like, oh, we made it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I wasn't in on any of that. I, I was too introverted for like social media for a long time. Yeah, I think I was a lot more extroverted as a kid than you were. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I definitely had my my shyness to an extent, but I mean, I was I was all up in the ICQ and AIM and MySpace, which yeah, you were into MySpace because but. of Facebook. I didn't have that till like '06 when I went to college, and even then, I was like, "What do I even do with this? No one's interacting," so I deleted that pretty quick. I didn't get mine until 2009 or 10, but right. it's because I was very like, if you ever watched the South Park episode where Stan Mar- Stan did not want Facebook and everybody mm-hmm. kept pressuring him to get it, that was pretty much me. I was yeah. like, Facebook is stupid. MySpace is dead. I don't want social media. Well, well it's weird, man. I, d- I got on MySpace after I deleted my Facebook. Like it, like it was like 07. It was in the waning years of MySpace. But like our friend Jesse, like that click was still into MySpace. You and her, you, you, I was friends with her on MySpace too. Were you friends with her on MySpace? Yeah, yeah. Well, I said, that's that was like in the in the waning days of MySpace. That's when I was into it as the ship was going it's down. So basically. crazy. We both had her as friends, but we didn't know each other. Yep. And then I, I ended up just I, I don't know if I deleted it or just never looked at it again. And you know, event, I didn't get Facebook again until recent years. Like I got every now station. and again. Before we wrap this up, because we're going to wrap it up here in a minute, but before we do, let's see if I can log into my old MySpace. And I know you people can't uh, see it, but. I'm just going to log in and let JP take a look. JP, why don't you scoot your chair around real quick? All right, I'll, I'll walk around.
if the computer will ever load. Yeah, I was going to say, this is loading like it's actually 2003. Let's go to MySpace. I don't even know if it still has the backgrounds and stuff. I haven't logged on to MySpace in a long time, but I remember my... But you never deactivated it. Mm-mm. So it's, it's it could, still this could be like a time capsule. All right, let's go. I, I, it's crazy it even still exists. Sign in. Gosh, I don't even remember what my... I think... I know my password. I don't remember... It's like Will Smith's on there. I mean, it's got stories on here. Like, people still use it. I would love to see MySpace make a comeback. That'd be crazy. I thought it was fun. What song did you... Did you have a song on your profile? Oh, uh, yeah. I can't, who knows what it was, though? We're going to take it back. Because, I have, like I said, I haven't been on here. And if I've logged... I haven't done anything to it in a very long time. Oh, my God. It's so slow. Yeah, I was going to say it's loading like it's 2003. Oh, no. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, there we go. Sign into MySpace. Let me see. I think it was. There we go. Yep. No oh, man. Up oh, here we go. Oh crap! Invalid password. I do know my password though. God bless it. This computer. How do we work in a state of the art station? Crappy computers. What the hell, man? Yeah, man, as you were typing, like, some letters went away, some didn't. Did they? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. And your password was Let's like... try this again. Son of a bitch. Hold on. Let me try one more thing. Let me try one more thing. What the hell, man? That makes me mad. That it's like me. we're going to have a, a cliffhanger. I'm, I'm going to get into this thing. Tune in tomorrow for Justin's MySpace. We'll probably still be waiting for it to load. Probably. What the hell? All right. So that's not. That's not. Ooh. Whatever you did there just oh. created some. It's not. I, oh my god! I signed into it like a like two years ago. I think I didn't stay in there long, but I know that that's what I used. Mm. Uh, JP, I'll, entertain them while I try something. I'll be a. I just got a weird uh, comment on Facebook about what happened to your station. Let me just make sure it's not off the air. Yeah, run over there and check on it. So you're stuck with me while I try to log into my Facebook and. I'm not having very good success here. Make sure caps lock's not on. Is it on? Yeah. Seems to be. Push the on air button. It seems to be playing on air. Weird. Yeah, I posted something on our uh, station's Facebook, and someone kind of, nothing to do with the station, just a random article, and this person says, "What happened to your station?" Maybe they did. Maybe they don't like the station. They're like, "What happened to your station?" Well, we've been. <laughs> it's been practically exactly the same for two years. Okay, I can't get in. That sucks ass, man. I've gotten in before, and I don't know why all of a sudden now it's 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 giving me so much trouble. Well, just, you know, maybe we can uh, revisit tomorrow. But it's been a good podcast, jam-packed. We've covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we have. Like, good luck trying to figure out a title for this one. Yeah, well, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably go with what we started talking about, just like, you know, porno over the generations or something. No, let's. I mean, that was a pretty big talking point. Mm, entertain them, JP. I don't know what to say. I, I don't. I don't think you're. I don't think you're getting in, brother. We don't know that yet. Now, I think porno is a uh, an interesting topic. I'm fascinated by human behavior. Part of me wishes I had of a uh, had I went to school for like psychology or something. Let's see. I might have linked it up with my my Facebook. Let's see. What the hell, man? Nope, it ain't happening. 
No. That sucks. That sucks so much ass. Like, I know I've gotten in there before. Like, I, I know I have. If it's inactive for X amount of time, do they deactivate it? Or they hadn't over the last, like, 10 years. Hmm. They've probably got so many inactive accounts. Maybe they, they just had to, like, clear them out some. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, man. That sucks so much, but I really wanted to be able to get in. Let me try it on here and see if this will work. All right, we're going to get this. If you've stuck with us through this, you are awesome. Uh, let's see. Yahoo.com. Back when I used now Yahoo. I was say, the, the funniest part is the payoff for the listener. It's, it's a visual thing. They still can't see it. Right. But we're going we're gonna to enjoy the satisfaction. I can't believe they're going to relaunch not, the X-Men again. That's Jonathan Hickman's right. taking over. They're going to totally renumber. Ugh. I bet you're not thrilled about that. Probably a new, uh, totally new. Uh, at least we got Cyclops and Wolverine. I just, I want the, I want the '90s X-Men crew. You know, right? Cyclops, they're gonna take him out of his blue suit again. Really? Probably. Yeah. The, these uh solicitation images I see, he's like just back to the, whatever you want to call it. Wolverine's still in the brown and uh, gold though. Well, it looks like I'm not getting into my MySpace, even though I swear I have a password demon that follows me around. Like, I have so many times I go to log into something I log into every day, and sometimes it just don't work. Yeah, could be. And I will literally type the same password over and over and over, and then one time it just works. Screw you, MySpace. Yeah. I just spent like 10 minutes praising you. Go eat ass. Well, that's going to wrap it up Some for us for that. today. I'm sure someone on MySpace is into that. Just check and, their profile. Uh, uh, speaking of social media, shout out to listener Derek. He uh, messaged and uh, followed me on Instagram. going to try to put more more stuff on the old Instagram. Speaking of which, we got to give our social media stuff. Yeah, you can follow us, JP. Let's get yours. All right, uh, JP Slim on Periscope. I know not a lot of people are into Periscope. I love Periscope. My favorite social media platform of all time, so... JP Slim on Periscope and uh, Instagram J underscore Radsaw, R A D S A W, just like it sounds. J oh, yeah. And for me, mine's super simple. I'm Justin Lloyd is the name for all of them. I'm Justin Lloyd. No apostrophe, two L's in Lloyd, no spaces. Just I'm Justin Lloyd. We'll get you Instagram, Snapchat, and Periscope. So give us a follow. Go like the uh, walk, I mean, the Podcasting Dead Facebook page, too. Do it. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow for mail call, I do suppose. Um, Yeah, so be good. I'm Justin. And I'm JP. And we'll see you soon.